Hello and welcome to another episode of In The Mix, presented by Crossbones MMA Radio. I'm your host, John Galloway, and today, as we look at the world of combat sports, I'll be joined by my guest, Jeff Aronson. Jeff, Crossbones MMA, how's it going? Good, buddy. How you doing, John? I'm doing well. I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. So, Jeff, as always, we got big things, exciting things coming out of the world of Titan FC. Uh, we got another event coming up on December 19th at the Sangha Center in Lowell, Massachusetts. Uh, why don't you just talk a little bit about the event to start us off? Man, um, you know, I, I, I feel like a broken record because I, I keep saying it, but, but I swear to God, I'm saying it sincere from my heart. Every event that we put on is bigger and better than the event before it. Um, and, and since we started, on this fight, we have two title fights, John Matson fighting Jack May, um, Desmond Green against Steven Seiler, and the debut of Rick Horn. And, um, you know, the whole card is stacked, you know, um, all the way through from Nick Hornstein fighting Iliad Santos, Ben Brewer fighting Junior Killer. Um, there's, uh, you know, just so many incredible fights on this card that literally when we were working the TV schedule out, we, we figured there was eight fights that could have been um, on TV. So it's just, it's super exciting. Yeah, and, you know, coming into this, uh, you guys had a, another flurry of, uh, of signings, most notably probably uh, is Hawn. Uh, what's it mean to you guys over there, Titan, that you guys are really starting to attract bigger names, you know, bigger prospects? Um, and, you know, it seems like they, they want to come fight for you guys at Titan and they want to, you know, come be part of your organization. What does that mean to you guys? Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think that's, that's an incredibly... Um, uh, cool aspect of, of what we've been doing and, and getting the recognition for what we have been doing. I think the fighters themselves, along with the fans, realize with Titan the opportunities that come along with it, um, such as the Zufa out, such as the, the matchups, the tough matchups, the national platform, the way we treat our fighters. Um, you know, I, I've, I've said in, in, in many um, many interviews and many articles, while other promotions sleep, we sign. And that's the truth. I have Scott Cupworth and Joe Wooster and myself up at all hours of the night talking to people all over the world, signing the top prospects in the world and, and the, the top free agent vets. And I think Horn is a perfect example of that, of somebody that if you would have asked, you know, a year ago when, when I took over Titan, um, is there any shot that Titan could sign Rick Horn? I think the consensus in the media and the fans, every place in the world would have been, there is no fucking way that <laughs> Titan will sign Rick Horn. No way. And now a year later, you know, Horn has been signed, Madsen's been signed, Shamalov was signed, Green was signed, Reach, you know, it's just over and over and more and more. And, and you know, Jacob No, who hasn't fought for Titan yet. And, and um, there, there's just a massive list of, of guys that people would have said to you, there's no way those guys are not going to go over that. Yeah, and you know what? It's not even just inside the ring that you guys are signing big names. You guys just announced this week that uh, Jorge Rivera uh, is going to be doing the, the play-by-play announcing for you guys on uh, CBS Sports that night. You know, talk about that, bringing in, you know, guys with the experience like, like Stefan had, and now Stefan, you know, is fighting again and is not available. Uh, and you're able to bring in another guy like Jorge to just, you know, step right into his place. And, you know, we'll, we'll see how he does, but I, I'm going to guess with, with a 29 record and, you know, the, the wealth of information that he has to draw from, that he's going to do a great job just like always. Yeah, I mean, how cool is that? Jorge Rivera um, doing commentating a card in Boston where, you know, he's, he's raised and, and spent his whole life. Um, you know, Jorge has been a friend for years and years and years, also a, a extremely close friend with Lex McMahon. And... Um, when, when this became available, you know, Jorge uh, used to do the show on ESPN. So he's been commentating for a long time, and, and he, he certainly has plenty of experience. He's going to provide another level of insight to what's going on, and I think it's going to be a great banter back and forth between him, Faraz Zahabi, and Tony Luffman. And I'm, I'm just super psyched about uh, Jorge doing the commentary. Yeah, it's going to be pretty rare when, you know, 
one of the guys that gets one of the biggest ovations is just somebody that's doing the commentary, uh, seeing that he's about 30 minutes outside of where you guys are going to be holding the show. But uh, you guys got a lot of things going on with other with other events as well. Um, you know, it seems that Titan is, uh, you know, obviously, you know, fans, fighters first, but it seems like you guys also try to give back to other organizations. And you guys have recently been doing a lot of work with uh, setting up a program for Mobile AeroFest. And uh, you guys have something coming up in March. What's going on down there? Mobile Arrow Fest is going to be a week-long festival, massive festival, you know, um, almost like a modern-day Woodstock, um, but, but, you know, for veterans. Um, there'll be food, there'll be bands, there'll be cultivated, culminated by a Titan event, just, you know, massive by the... the um, massive event being put on um, down there and, and the fact that they're bringing Titan in as, as you know, a pinnacle point in, in that event is just crazy because there's going to be just just so many masses of people that um, I, I, I'm so excited to do that event. Yeah, and, you know, that's one of the things uh, you guys have, have done a lot of work with uh, A Hero, with uh, Lee Stuckey over there. Uh, you, you guys really seem to be uh, one of the top organizations, if not the top, when it comes to, you know, giving back to not just the fans, but, uh, you know, the veterans and, you know, the armed forces, the people who allow us to, you know, enjoy the events that you put on all the time. So, you know, it, it's great to see that, and it's easy for us to help support you, uh, you know, watching you going out and helping support them. I really appreciate that. The truth is those guys are the real fighters. I mean, they're out there, you know, they're on the front lines. They're risking bullets crossing their head. They're having, you know, hand-to-hand -hand combat. They're they're seeing things that, that you and I in our whole life should never see, our children should never see. Um, and if you look at the ratios and, and, and the numbers that Lee Stucky puts out about the amount of vets uh, killed in, in um, you know, combat versus the amount of vets that take their own lives every year, it's just astonishing. Um, it, it's just really horrific. And if we could do anything to help those those uh, veterans and those warriors, man, Titan's door is open, and and we we do whatever we can, and we invite them, and, and we have them come to the shows. And it's um it, it, it's a very it's a very important cause for us. Um, you know, Lex is prior service Marine. He sits on the board of a hero, and um, you know. A funny story is when, when I took over Titan, I said to Lex a few days afterwards, you know, I was getting all the dust was settling. I said, man, you know, I uh, I would love to do something with Titan and a hero. He didn't even bring it up to me yet. And and he, his eyes literally just started to water. And he was like, man, I, I, I can't thank you enough. And the fact that you came to me on it and I didn't go to you just means so so much to me that I can't even put into words. And the same from Lee. You know, Lee's been, you know, in contact. And, you know, I'm just so happy to be able to do something for those guys. Yeah, you know, it's a sobering sobering statistic that he gave out a couple months back when, when we spoke with him for uh, Crossbones. But, uh, you know, it's, it's awesome to see anybody try to help out and give back. And, you know, he goes above and beyond. But uh, I don't want to get too far away from, you know, com uh, what you guys got coming up. So I want to I want to get back to that. Let's talk about uh, real quick the the heavyweight title. You got Dave Herman um, and uh, John Madsen. No, Herman's oh, out. Uh, Herman's Jack out. Excuse, Mac. excuse Jack me. Mac. Yep. Uh, so talk about the new matchup and and what we're what we're going to be expecting from that. So in a lot of ways, um, I think the Jack May fight is actually a better fight than the Dave Herman fight, and I'll tell you why. Um, Jack May is a guy who came out. 7-0, suffered, um, you know, two two losses in the octagon. The first fight with Eric Lewis, he got hurt, he lost. The second fight, he had an all-out war with Sean Jordan, and he wound up losing that fight. In my opinion, Jack May went into UFC too early. I mean, I'm not his manager. I, I watched film on him. I watched early film on him, and the guy's... A physical beast. I think he's six eight. I think um, I think every win he has, or almost every win, is by knockout. The guy is just just a, a, a nasty, you know, K one level kickboxer and striker. 
Um, and he's going up against John Madsen. John Madsen, 4-1 and one in the UFC, uh, loses one fight in UFC and gets cut, decides, screw this, I'm going to take two years, two and a half years off, and gets the urge to fight again, goes, fights a guy, knocks him out cold in 45 seconds. I bring him, I bring him over to Titan, and he's fighting for the title. I spoke to his coach, Mark Montoya, the other day. He told me John Madsen is down into the low 240s from his old fighting weight of 263. Um, he said he looks like a cat <laughs> and is, is moving better, faster, and stronger than ever. And that, uh, you know, he, he just looks like a totally different person. Yeah, that cat might be a Bengal tiger at that size, though, I'll tell you that. Yeah, you're not kidding. Anybody that's seen John Madsen or stood next to John Madsen, he's got the bone skeletal structure of literally a dinosaur. The guy is just <laughs> so thick and strong, you know. Um, so I, I, I expect that to be fireworks. I, I don't I don't know how the fight is uh, is going to end, but I know it's not going to go to decision. You know, I don't know what round it's going to end, but I, I would bet dollars to donuts that fight does not go to decision. Yeah, and that's not the only title fight that you guys are, are putting on that night. Um, we also have the featherweight title uh, between Des Green, who was just, you know, looked phenomenal in his last fight for you guys. Uh, and he's going to be taking on Steven Seiler. So, you know, wh- where's that fight going to go? How do you see that fight going? So, Des Green, you know, when you talk about in, in the pre fight meetings, you talk about, you know, let the world remember you, you know, let them know your name. I think Des Green came out of, you know, I mean, people knew that Des Green was, was an athlete and a, a really good wrestler and, you know, um, just explosive, but no one has ever seen Des Green um, strike like that and react like that. And I think the time he spent over at TriStar has just been incredible for his career. And from what I'm hearing up there on a daily basis, he's just getting better and better and better. And he's, he's you know, going in there with, with UFC vets on a daily basis and, and truly giving them everything they can handle. Um, on the other side, you've got Steven Seiler, UFC vet, nine-time, ten-time UFC vet, um, tough as nails. I mean, really, you got to kill that guy to get him out of there. Um he, he's not going to back down. He's not going to. Um, he's not going to allow Desmond Green to impose his will on him. Um, he knows the hype train that is Desmond Green right now. I think every reporter in the country after the Titan event scheduled an interview with with uh, Des Green. You know, it was that crazy. Um, I, Des Green woke the world up literally. And and you know, if, if Des Green can get through Steven Seiler, and I'm saying that with a big if because. Steven Seiler has told me, you know, I, I'm finishing this kid. I'm taking that hype. I want that hype. I'm finishing this kid. And, you know, I, I think he's going to give it everything he's got to, to smash Green. If Green can somehow pull a win off over Seiler, I think he writes his ticket um, to go, you know, anywhere he wants or, or stay a Titan. It's up to him. But he would, at that point, in my opinion, be that if he's not right now the hottest featherweight, um, you know, prospect that's sitting out there right now. And I don't know if you could even call him a prospect, considering that he went to the finals of the Bellator tournament without a training camp, shadow boxing in his garage. Yeah, that, that's just uh, a ridiculous fact right there. <laughs> but um, you know, yeah. so you know those those two card or those two fights are on the card. Uh, the undercard is looking great. You guys are actually moving this card up time-wise, uh, making it a little bit earlier in the evening uh, because you were getting getting such great response. Is that correct? Yeah, it is. Um, actually, we just announced it today. We've been talking to CBS about it, and they're, they're so excited, and we're so excited about you know what we've been doing and and how good our response has been and our ratings and everything else that um with the two title fights with the debut of recon with everything going on um you know they said let's do a nine o'clock spot and let's put you guys into the the ultimate prime time on friday night and um we'll be live 9 p.m eastern standard um on cbs sports network streaming live 7 p.m. Uh, on C- 
CBSSports.com and CBSSportsNetwork.com. They're doing it on both this time because they've been getting nailed with people on the internet just really going after it, um, you know, watching it. Sure. So they split it into two sites. Um, it's just incredible. The growth of Titan in, in, you know, these 11 months, I really feel the trajectory um, is greater than any other promotion in the country of what we've accomplished in that amount of time. I, I would think that that's a, a fair assessment, um, you know, an unbiased assessment. Uh, I would think that you guys have made, yeah. the, you know, the biggest moves in the last year. Um in order to, you know, promote yourselves and, you know, promote growth within your organization. I think that's that's uh, pretty fair and clear to see. You know, I, I and I don't say it as a, a breaking point whatsoever, but Titan was basically in obscurity as a, a, a local regional promotion in Kansas City. And, you know, you look at, at what's happened since then, you know, Lester Mann has come on, Eric, Eric Talent, uh, you know, C producer, director, Rep Butler, Burt Watson, second over at UFC, Scott Cutler, RFA matchmaker, um, Joe Wooster, um, you know, Tim Schultz, uh, one of the top attorneys in the in the state of Florida, came in as in-house counsel. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure I'm, I'm missing plenty of other people. But And then you, you look at the fire, Brian Levick, who's just done a fantastic job on PR this last year. And, and you know, it, it literally has been such a combined effort of things and, and the fighters have done their job and we've done our job with them and it's it's super exciting to see where we are. If you would have told me this was a card I was going to have um, at the end of 2014 with Rick Horn fighting Carlo Prado on that card as well, I would have said to you, you're crazy. <laughs> there, there's no way. And uh, and here we are. And, and we're here. And, and in my opinion, this is a card that could be on, you know, any promotion, and they'd be proud of it. So I'm, I'm super stoked. Yeah, and we are here, and this is how you're ending 2014. What are you guys looking to do to top 2014 in the coming year? I mean, I'm my own worst, you know, critic. So to me, every show has to be better than the last one. And trying to figure out how I'm going to do that on this <laughs> next show is really difficult. Um, but but we're going to do it, and we're going to go out there, and I think you're going to see international expansion in 15. I think you're going to see um, possibly even a bigger platform that we're on. Um, I see a lot of things. I think you'll see uh, Shamalov making his debut, um, Jacob Nicole making his debut. Um, you know, there, there's a bunch of fighters that have been signed. There's a killer 125er out of... Uh, out of um, Colorado in Sid Bice, who will be making his debut. He trains with Joe Warren and Nick Hornstein. Um, you know, it, it, we, there's so many talented guys on this roster. Uh, Elias Garcia, who's uh, Showtime Pettis' cousin, will be on this card coming up. Um, you know, we have so many guys that no one knows we even have yet. After the new year, we'll put out a full roster and we'll, we'll have the the new website, but I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's really exciting. Very cool. Now I got to ask you real quick, cause you know, through Twitter and through Facebook and everywhere else that, you know, you seem to turn these days, uh, the big news over the last couple of weeks was the, uh, the UFC and the Reebok deal. Um, do you see, yeah. do you see you guys doing anything in that direction? And, uh, have you guys received any, uh, any increased traffic in sponsorship requests? Um, due to that, uh, that them kind of going just with uh, re- with Reebok there. Yeah, we've definitely um, seen an increase in in uh, sponsorship traffic. People calling us, um, you know, uh, hoping to get involved and seeing if we can put something together. And and um, you know, as far as an, uh, a deal for a, a uniform deal, I don't know. I mean, you know, I, I'd really have to see how it would work out and it would really truly have to play to the fighter's advantage and if we can make something happen i wouldn't be opposed to it all right well i'm gonna let you go jeff i really appreciate your time that's gonna wrap up another episode of in the mix presented by crossbones mma radio I'd like to extend a big thank you to today's guest for joining us for jeff this is john and we are tapping out